welcome my dears our new topic quest for a theory of everything by kitty gale ferguson this chapter is about stephen hawkins let's move to the chapter quest for a theory of everything by kitty gale ferguson In the Cockroach Lecture Room on April 29, 1980, scientists and university dignitaries gathered in steep tiers of seats facing a two-storied wall of chalkboard and slide screen. The occasion was the inaugural lecture by a new Lusatian professor of mathematics, the 38-year-old mathematician and physicist Stephen Hawking. in this chapter and in this first paragraph what is kitty gale ferguson talking about stephen hawking there was a program and this program was conducted in cockroach lecture room on april 29 1980 we can see different scientists university dignitaries they all were gathered in steep tiers of seats and they are facing the story wall of two story wall of chalkboard and a slide screen in front of them the occasion was the inaugural lecture by a new lusatian professor of mathematics what is the program the the program was the inaugural lecture by a new lusatian professor of mathematics the 38 year old mathematician and the physicist stephen hawking so the occasion was the inaugural lecture by stephen hawking stephen hawking a uh, the lusatian professor of mathematics and the 38 year old mathematician and a physicist that is the first paragraph next paragraph the title of the lecture was a question is the end in sight for the theoretical physics what is the title of the lecture given by stephen hawking the title of the lecture was a question is the end in sight for theoretical physics okay the lecture is about is the end in sight for theoretical physics hawking startled his listeners by announcing that he thought it was stephen hawking he startled the listeners how he startled the listeners by announcing that he thought it was he thought it was means he thought there was an end in sight for the theoretical physics he invited them to join in a sensational escape through time and space to find the holy grail of science stephen hawking he invited each and every audience to join him in a sensational escape through time and space to find the holy grail of science what is meant by holy grail in the medieval legend Holy Grail means it is a cup used by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. That's the meaning of Holy Grail. So he invited them to join in a sensational escape through time and space to find the Holy Grail of science, the theory that explains the universe and everything that happens in it. Stephen Hawking he sat silently in a wheelchair. while when no few students read his lecture to the assembled company stephen hawking was un- unable to speak he was sitting silently in a wheelchair while one of his students he read the lecture to the assembled company jacked by the appearance alone hawking didn't seem a promising choice to lead any adventure judged by the appearance of stephen hawking 
that there was not a promising choice to lead in adventure because he is sitting silently in a wheelchair, unable to speak. Only his students were assembling. His students were giving lecture of Stephen Hawking to the audience. Stephen William Hawking was born. Stephen William Hawking was born on. 8th January 1942 in Oxford England it was exactly 300 years after the death of Galileo the father of modern science Stephen Hawking was born on January 8th when was he born he was born on January 8th 1942 in Oxford England It was exactly three hundred years. It has. It was exactly three hundred years after the death of Galileo, the father of modern science. So Stephen Hawking was born on January eighth, nineteen forty-two, in Oxford, England. It was exactly three hundred years after the death of Galileo, the father of modern science. Frank and Isabel, Stephen parents. they were not wealthy but they believed in the value of education in the in this paragraph we are talking about his parents frank and isabel hawking stephen parents frank hawking stephen hawking's father and isabel hawking stephen hawking's mother so stephen parents were they were not wealthy they were not very rich but they believed in the value of education they were not at all wealthy but they believed in the value of education so they planned for stephen to go to westminster a famous public school in the heart of london the parents planned the stephen hawking to go to westminster what is westminster it's a very famous school in the heart of london so they like to send him to westminster school but unfortunately Stephen was ill at the time of scholarship examination for Westminster. Stephen Hawking was ill at the time of the scholarship examination to Westminster School, and he was not unable and he was not able to attend the exam scholarship exam. So what happened? Therefore, he attended the local Saint Albans School. He was unable to. right to the scholarship examination and he was admitted to the local saint albans school he didn't get appointment in westminster school so he got appointment in local saint albans school by the time he was 8 he was thinking seriously about becoming a scientist by the time of 8 When Stephen Hawking was eight years old, he was thinking seriously about becoming a scientist. Frank Hawking, his father, encouraged his son to follow him to medicine. But his father, Frank Hawking, he encouraged Stephen Hawking to follow him to medicine to study medicine. But Stephen found biology too impious. But Stephen, he found biology does not excite for him. he was not interested to study medicine he wanted a subject in which he could no longer he could lo- look for exact answers and get to the root of the things so he wanted a subject in which he could look for exact answers he wanted a subject in which he could look for exact answers and to get the root of the things stephen hawking's interested in which in which subject yes he was interested to look for exact answers and to get the root of the things of the questions again okay, he was not interested to study medicine he wanted a subject in which he could look for look for exact answers and he could get the answers from the root of the things itself young stephen he was no prodigy he was not very genius he was just an ordinary english school boy in his childhood days stephen hawking he was not very he was not prodigy he was not very a genius he was just an ordinary english school boy 
slow in learning to read. He was very slow in learning to read. And his handwriting, what about his handwriting? This handwriting, the despair of the teachers. The teacher became very despair. Okay, the teacher became, the teachers became very sad about his handwriting because the handwriting was despair for the teachers. And he was ranked no more than halfway up in his class. And what about his ranking in the class? His rank was no more than halfway up in the class. He was just in the middle of the class. His rank was just in the middle of the class. He was not very genius in his childhood days. Although he now sees in his, in his own defense, it was a very bright class. And what is his opinion about the class? He said that his class were very bright classes. The next paragraph. At 14, Stephen knew that he could pursue mathematics and physics. His father called this impractical, for there were no jobs in mathematics except teaching. At 14, Stephen knew that he could pursue mathematics and physics. At 14 years old, Stephen Hawking came to understand that he could pursue mathematics and physics. He liked to learn mathematics and physics. At 14 years old, he was very interested to learn mathematics and physics. His father, who was his father, Frank Isabel, sorry, Frank Hawking. Okay, so Frank Hawking called this impractical. For there were no jobs in mathematics except teaching. So his father advised him that, yes, mathematics offered no jobs except teaching. And this is impractical to study mathematics because mathematics offered no jobs except teaching. Moreover, he wanted his son to attend his own college and Oxford offered no mathematics. Moreover, he wanted his son to attend his own college. Moreover, he wanted his son to attend his own college and Oxford offered no mathematics. He followed his father's advice and studied. And studied. He followed his father's advice and studied chemistry, physics, and only a little mathematics. So he followed his father's advice and he studied math. Sorry, not mathematics. He studied chemistry, physics, and only a little mathematics. Or for Oxford, or for only a little mathematics. So he studied on the advice of his father, chemistry, physics, and a little mathematics. In preparation for the entrance into Oxford. And he did well in physics and the interview was brilliantly accepted. He did very well in physics and the interview was very well accepted. In 1959, at the age of 17, Hawking went to Oxford to study natural science and to specialize in physics. He joined the university college, his father's college, and the oldest at Oxford, founded in 1249 AD. In 1959, at the age of 17, Hawking went to Oxford to study natural science and to specialize in physics. In 1959, at the age of 17 years old, Hawking went to Oxford. Why he went to Oxford? He went to Oxford to study natural science and to specialize in physics. And he joined the university college, his father's college, a king. And the oldest at Oxford, the university college in Oxford, it is the oldest college at Oxford, and it is founded in 1249 AD. So he went to Oxford to study natural science and to specialize in physics. Nevertheless, for about a year and a half, nevertheless, for about a year and a half, Hawking was lonely and bored. For about a year and a half, Stephen Hawking was lonely and he felt very boring in Oxford in the, during his first year. Nevertheless, for about a year and a half, that means that during his first year at Oxford, he felt lonely and boring at Oxford. He was not inspired to relieve his boredom by exerting himself academically. He was not inspired to relieve his boredom he was not ready to relieve his boredom 
by exerting himself academically. Okay, that means he didn't in spite to relieve his boredom. He was not ready to relieve his boredom by exerting himself academically. He felt aloof from everything during his first year at Oxford. But halfway through his second year, he began enjoying Oxford. But what about his second year? His second year at Oxford University, he enjoyed his second year and he became popular among his peers during his second year. But what about his first year at Oxford? Yes, the first year at Oxford was very boring and he felt very lonely. But, but his second year in Oxford was quite different because he began to enjoy Oxford. However, okay, he became popular He became popular and well accepted among his peers. They remember him as lively, buoyant and adaptable. He wore his long hair and was famous for his wit, liked classical music and science fiction and took part in sports. He became very popular and well accepted among his peers during the second year at Oxford. He became very popular among his peers. Among his classmates and his schoolmates, he became very popular during the second year at Oxford. And they remember, they means who? The schoolmates, okay, or the peers. They remember him as lively, buoyant and adaptable. He became very adjustable during his second year and he became very lively. He became very popular and he became very optimistic during his second year at Oxford. He wore his long hair and was famous for his wit. He liked the classical music and science fiction and took part in sports. He wore his long hair. He wore his long hair. A king. And he was very famous for his wit. He was very famous for his intellectual. He was very famous for his humor sounds. And he liked the classical music and science fiction. He liked classical music and science fiction. And he took part in sports during his second year at Oxford. So his Oxford, his second year at Oxford, it is quite different from the first year. He became very popular among his peers and he became very lively. He became very buoyant and adaptable. And he wore his long hair and he was very famous for his weight. He liked classical music and science fiction and he took part in sports. Next. However, at the end of the third year, Hawking almost fluttered. He selected theoretical physics as a speciality. He had then applied to do a PhD at Cambridge and was accepted on the condition that he could first from Oxford. Hawking was confident that he could get through successfully. However, at the end of the third year, Hawking almost fluttered. He was very confused during his third year at Oxford University. Okay, however, at the end of the third year, Hawking almost fluttered. He selected theoretical physics as a speciality. So he selected theoretical physics as a speciality while at Oxford. He had then applied to do PhD at Cambridge. He applied to do PhD at Cambridge. And he was accepted on the condition that Cambridge University, they accepted him on the condition that he go first from Oxford. While he go first from Oxford, he will be appointed at Cambridge. And Hawking was confident that he could get through successfully. Hawking was very confident that he could get first from Oxford. But at the examination day approached, but at the examination day approached, his confidence failed. Stephen Hawking's confidence totally failed during his, during his third year. Okay, at the time of the examination, especially at the time of the examination, his confidence failed. 
and Hawking ended up disastrously on the borderline between the first and the second. Stephen Hawking was in the borderline. Stephen Hawking was in the borderline between the first and second. Okay, Stephen ended up disastrously on the borderline between the first and the second. That means that he was in the borderline between the first and second. Okay, at the Oxford University. He was not ranked first from the Oxford. He was not ranked first from the Oxford. He was just in the borderline between the first and second. Why he was in why he was in the borderline between the first and second? Because of the examination. When the examination day approached, his confidence failed and he was not unable, he was not able to attend the examination properly and he was in the borderline between the first and second. Faced with the borderline result, the examiner Simon Hawking for an interview and questioned him about his plans. In spite of the tenseness of the situation, Hawking managed to come up with a kind of the remark for which he was very famous among his friends. Faced with the borderline result, he was in the borderline result from the Oxford and the examiner summoned him, the examiners called him, summon means call him and Hawking for an interview, they summoned for an interview, they called him for an interview and questioned him about his plans. Okay. The Cambridge examiners, they summoned him for an interview and they questioned him about his plans. In spite of the tenseness of the situation, Hawking managed to come up with a kind of remark for which he was famous among his friends. In spite of the tenseness of the situation, Hawking managed to come up with a kind of the remark for which he was famous among his friends. He was very tensed. He was very much tensed when the examiner summoned for an interview. And in spite of the tenseness of the situation, Hawkins, he managed to come up with a kind of the remark. He managed all his tenseness while the interview and he was famous among, while he was famous among his friends for the remarks. He said, if I get first, I shall go to Cambridge. If I receive a second, I will remain at Oxford. Okay, so what he said, if I get first, I shall go to Cambridge. If I get first, I shall go to Cambridge. If I receive second, I will remain at Oxford. So I expect that you will give me first. Okay. What he said, he said that if I get first, I shall go to Cambridge and if I receive second, I shall remain at Oxford. So I expect that you will give me first. And he got first and he went to Cambridge. While at the interview session, he performed very well and he got his first and he wanted to Cambridge to join PhD. Okay, clear. Next paragraph. His first year at Cambridge was worse than at Oxford. His first year at Cambridge was worse than at Oxford. What about his first year at uh, Oxford? Yes, his first year at Oxford was a very bo boring, lonely. Okay, and what about his first year at Cambridge? Now we are talking about his Cambridge. Okay, now we are talking about the first year at Cambridge. His first year at Cambridge was worse than at Oxford. His first year, would you, his first year was very worse when compared to Oxford. He slipped short. Why the first year of Cambridge was worse than Oxford? Because of a slip shoot mathematical background. Because of a careless mathematical background caught up with him from Oxford. He got only a, a, a slip shoot mathematical background from Oxford. Because uh, Oxford offered no mathematics there. Only a little mathematics was offered for him. Isn't it? So, because of the slip shoot mathematical background. Because of the careless mathematical background. Okay, he found our general relativity extremely tough. While he was while he was at the Cambridge, he felt the general relativity extremely tough. He felt the general relativity extremely tough. Another far more disastrous problem arose then. Another far more disastrous problem arose then. What is another problem at Cambridge University? During his third year at Oxford itself, during his third year at Oxford, 
Hawking started getting clumsy. He became very careless du during the third year at Oxford. He had fallen once or twice for no apparent reason. He had fallen once or twice for no apparent reason. He had fallen once or twice for no apparent reason. We don't know what is the reason, but he had fallen once or twice while he was walking along the corridors at Oxford University itself. He fallen once or twice for no apparent reason. And of flowing autumn at Cambridge, he had trouble tying his shoes. And while his while his third year at Cambridge Okay, while his third year at Cambridge itself, he had a trouble tying his shoes. He had some trouble while he was tying his shoes. He felt some uh, difficulties while tying his shoes. And sometimes he had a difficulty talking. Sometimes he had a difficulty in talking too while he was at Cambridge. So these all are the symptoms that occurred during his college days itself. What are the symptoms? Yes, he had fallen once or twice for no, no apparent reason and he had a difficulty in talking. He had a difficulty in tying his shoes. Shortly after his 21st birthday in 1963. Okay. Shortly, next paragraph. Next paragraph. Shortly after his 21st birthday in 1963. Hawking contracted a riot disease, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, for which there was no known cure. So shortly after his 21st birthday in 1963, in 1963, during his 21st, 21st birthday, Hawking contracted a riot disease. What's a disease? Amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Okay, shortly after his 21st birthday in 1963, Hawking contracted a rare disease called amyotropic lateral sclerosis, for which there was no known cure. It was a rare disease, it was really a rare disease for which there was no known cure, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, during his 21st birthday. Shortly after his 21st birthday in 1963, he contracted this rare disease called amyotropic lateral sclerosis, for which there was no known cure. There is no known treatment, no known treatment for this disease. It caused, this disease caused a gradual disintegration of the nerve cells in the spinal cord and the brain. So this disease caused the gradual disintegration. This disease caused what? This disease caused the gradual disintegration of the nerve cells in the spinal cord. This disease caused the gradual disintegration Okay, of the nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. A riot disease called amyotropic lateral sclerosis. And what are the symptoms of the disease? Gradual disintegration of the nerve cells and the spinal cord. At first, he went into deep depression. He felt a deep depression. At first, he felt a deep depression because of this riot disease caught him. And he did not know what ought to do or what his future would be like. He did not know what ought to do because, yes, at his 21st birthday, this rare disease contracted him. So he became, yes, his future would be bleak. His future would be very bleak and he was very sad about this disease. During his youth, this disease had caught him. Okay, So he did not know what ought to do or what his future would be like. My dreams at the time were rather confused, he admitted. Before my condition was diagnosed, I had been very bored with life. There did not seem to be anything worth doing, but shortly after I came out of the hospital, I dreamt that I was going to be executed. I suddenly realized that there were a lot of worthwhile things to do if I reprived. My dreams at that time were rather confused, he admitted. His dreams at that time were rather confused. He don't know what his future would be like. All his dreams were rather confused during that years, he admitted. And before my condition was diagnosed, I had been very bored with life. Before his condition was diagnosed. Okay, 
he had been very bored with the life. He felt very boring with his life because of this rare disease. And this rare disease caused the gradual disintegration of the nerve cells and the spinal cord. Okay. So he was very unhappy. He was in total dilemma. And there did not seem to be anything worth doing. But shortly after I came out of the hospital, I dreamt that I was going to be executed. While Stephen Hawking came out of the ex uh, came out of the hospital, he felt that he was going to be executed. He was going to be killed like that. And I suddenly realized that there were a lot of worthwhile things to do. But he realized that there were a lot of things to do during his life. He had only a few days to live. Only a few days to live. Okay. So he thought that yes. There were a lot of worthwhile things to do during these days. And I replied, okay, next paragraph. Another recurring dream was the idea of sacrificing my life to save others. After all, if I, would go, if I were going to die, I might as well do some good. Another recurring dream was the idea of sacrificing my life to save others. Another recurring dream was the idea of sacrificing my life to save others. Another recurring dream. Recurring means it is happening again and again. That is recurring, recur, recur. recur recurring means it is happening again and again. Okay. Another recurring dream was the idea of sacrificing my life to save others. So, yes, he's thinking about his life. He's thinking about his future. Okay, he was thinking seriously to sacrifice his life to save others. He was thinking seriously to sacrifice his life to save others. After all, I would be going to die, I might do some good. Okay, after all, I were going to die, I might as well do some good. Okay, I might do something good to save others, to save others' life. He thinks seriously. I was thinking seriously to something do something do what wild things during all those days. Only the doctors advise him only uh, only two or three years to live. And during these years he have wanted to do something worthwhile things to save others. He's thinking seriously about that. Hawking's doctors hoped that his condition would stabilize, but the disease aggravated rapidly. And they soon informed him that he had only about two more years to live. Doctors, Hawking's doctors hoped that his condition would stabilize. Hawking's doctors hoped that his condition would stabilize, but the disease aggravated rapidly. Doctors hoped that his condition would stabilize. Stabilize means they become steady, but the disease aggravated rapidly. The disease aggravated rapidly isn't it okay the doctors think that his disease would sometimes stabilize but the condition was negative what about this condition his disease aggravated aggravate means yeah it increased very rapidly it increased rapidly his condition became very worse isn't it so they soon informed him that, they means the doctors, the doctors informed him that he had only two more years to live. So the doctors advised him that he will live only two more years. They soon informed him that he had only about two more years to live. The doctors advised him that he had only lived two or three years. And the two years passed. The doctors advised him he will live only two or three years. And the two years passed. The two years passed and the progression of the disease had slowed. Okay, the progression of his disease slowed. He didn't die. Stephen Hawking, he didn't die. In fact, although there was a cloud hanging over his future. In fact, although there was a cloud hanging over his future. I found to my surprise that I was enjoying life in depression more than before. So Stephen Hawking understood that he was enjoying his life more than before. Now he was enjoying his life. Now he was enjoying his life more than before. And total disability and death, though still, and not too distant certainty, were postponed. 
total disability and death, though still uh, not too distant certainty for postponed. It means that he couldn't postpone. He couldn't postpone his disease. He is definitely sure that he will die. Isn't it? That there was a cloud hanging over his future and this cloud will burst at any time. He knew that. Okay. He is aware of his about his condition, about his bad condition. Hawking had his deprive, a precarious and a temporary one, but the life was too precious. Hawking had his deprive, a precarious, precarious means very dangerous and a temporary one, but the life was, was precious. He understood that his life was precious because only he will live for, uh, for, many, uh, for only such days, isn't it? He was sure of that. So he understood that his life was very precious. At a New Year's party at St. Albans, just before he entered the hospital for tests, Hawking met Jane Wilde. To her, this disabled graduate student seemed terribly intelligent, eccentric, and rather arrogant. But he was interesting and she liked his wit. At a New Year's party at St. Albans, at a New Year's party at St. Albans, at a New Year's party at a St. Albans, just before he entered the hospital for test. He was just at the uh, St. Albans School, St. Albans Hospital School, St. Albans Hospital, and before he entered the hospital for test, he met Jane Wilde there. Jane Wilde, it became a turning point in his life. When he met Jane Wilde, it became a turning point in his life. To her, this disabled graduate student seemed terribly intelligent. She also remember this graduate student, terribly intelligent student, rather eccentric and arrogant student, Stephen Hawking. Jane Wilde still remembers him. But he was interesting and she liked his wit. And she too liked Stephen Hawking. And she, he was very interesting during his college days. And she liked his wit. Jane Wilde liked Stephen Hawking's wit. When Jane met him after discharge from hospital, okay, when Jane, when Jane at a New Year's party, same, okay, and when met, when Jane met him after his discharge, when ja Jane met him after his discharge from hospital, he was really in pathetic condition. I think he lost his will to live and he was very confused and she came at that. When Jane met him again after his discharge from the hospital. When Jane met him again after his discharge from hospital. Jane again met Stephen Hawking after his discharge from hospital. He was really in a pathetic condition. She understood that Stephen Hawking was in pathetic condition. Okay. While he got... He was discharged while Stephen Hawking was discharged from the hospital. Jane Wilde met him again. And I think he lost his will to live. Jane understood that he lost his will to live. He was really in a pathetic condition. He was really in a sad condition. So Jane understood his feelings. He lost his will to live. He was very confused, she commented. And she was not, however, put off by his physical or mental condition. Jane Wilde. Yes, Jane Wilde. She was not put off by his physical or mental condition. That means there was a crush in whose mind? Jane Wilde's mind, isn't it? She was not, however, put off by his physical or mental condition. She was rather a shy teenager, serious-minded, with a strong faith in God ingrained from his childhood by her mother. And I believe that good can come out of any adversity. Jane Wilde was rather a shy teenager. We are talking about Jane Wilde now here. Yeah? Jane Wilde was a rather shy teenager, a serious-minded, with a strong faith in God. She had a strong faith in God and it is ingrained from her mother. It is ingrained from childhood by her mother. Isn't it? And I believe that good can come out of any adversity. She has a belief that good can come out of any adversity. Yes, at any problem, good will come. 
she believes in bad okay good can come out of any adversity if anything bad will happen yes good will come so she believe in an optimistic manner that if everything happens to her or if everything happens to him yes will good will come out of that okay so she believes in that hacking had made her optimism and their friendship developed slowly and after a while the two began to realize in jane words that together we could make something worthwhile hacking admired hacking admired her optimism hacking admired her optimism and their friendship developed slowly stephen hacking he had made her optimism she was very optimistic isn't it she has a positive vibe isn't it that is optimistic so hacking admired her optimism and their friendship developed slowly their friendship developed slowly after a while the two began to realize in jane words that together we could make something worthwhile after a while the two began to realize in jane words after a while the two began to realize in jane words that together we could make something worthwhile in jane words in jane words he understood that yes together we could make something worthwhile the two began the two began means jane wild and stephen hawking they understood that if together we could make something worthwhile in our life if we join together in our life we could make something good in our life for stephen that made all the difference yes that that is a turning point in stephen hawking's life because of his physical she is not aware of his physical or the mental condition she was really in love with stephen hawking she was not put off by his physical or mental condition she was really in deep love with stephen hawking and they married for stephen that made all difference and he applied for a research fellowship at kais one of the colleges in cambridge university so he applied for a research fellowship at kais stephen hawking he applied for a research fellowship at kais one of the colleges in cambridge university one of the colleges in cambridge university that is kais kais college and he applied for a research fellowship at kais okay in 1965 at the age of 23 hawking received his fellowship at kais and in july of the same year jane and he were married in 1965 at the age of 23 hawking received his fellowship at kais at the age of 23 hawking he received his fellowship at kais and in july of the same year jane and he were married jane and jane wild and stephen hawking were married in 1965 people who remember hawking in the university in the late 1960s recall him making his way around the corridors with a cane supporting himself against the wall he spoke with a word sounded like a slight speech impediment but more than that they remember his brashness in sessions involving some of the words most distinguished scientists while other young researchers kept a reverential silence Hawking daringly asked unexpected and penetrating questions and he clearly knew that what he was talking about his reputation as a genius and other Einstein began then people who remember people who remember Hawking in the university in the late 1960s recall him making his way around the corridors with a cane people still remember hawking walking along the corridors with a cane and he supporting himself against the wall with a cane people still remember his walking along the corridors of the colleges with a cane in his hand and he supporting himself against the wall such a pathetic condition he was walking during his college days itself and he spoke with what sounded like a slight speech impediment he had something he had some uh, difficulties in speaking to you he spoke with what sounded like a slight speech impediment impediment means obstacles or hindrance he spoke what sounded like a slight speech impediment but more than that they remember his brashness but more than that they remember his brashness in sessions involving some of the world's most distinguished scientists and they still remember 
that means his college mates okay they still remember his brashness in sessions involving some of the world most distinguished scientists while in while some sessions were going on with the scientist uh, stephen hawking was very bold to ask questions in front of the scientists okay in spite of us in spite of his physical condition he was very bold to ask any questions during the sessions while other young researchers kept a reverential silence hawking daringly asked unexpected and penetrating questions during the sessions while other peers or while the young researchers were kept keeping reverential silence while the researchers were keeping reverential silence in the sessions hawking was very bold to ask uh, uh, different types of questions among the audience or among the young scientists while other young researchers kept a reverential silence hawking daringly asked uh, he daringly asked the unexpected what type of questions he asked he asked the unexpected and the penetrating questions he asked unexpected and penetrating question during the sessions was the young scientists and his reputation as a genius and as einstein began then so everybody understood that everyone understood that there was an there was another einstein began then yes there was his reputation as a genius and as einstein began then okay so everyone understood that yes stephen hawking was just like another einstein because of his penetrating and uh, because of his penetrating and unexpected questions in the sessions everyone understood that there was another einstein born was stephen hawking in 1980 a practical need for funds launched him to a new enterprise that was to have a far reaching impact on hawking and others all over the world in 1980 a practical need for funds launched him into a new enterprise in 1980 he need he there was a uh, there was a practical need for fund okay he need some ah uh, yeah fund okay uh, a need for funds launched him to start a new enterprise what is in the need for the fund for him yes in order to start a new enterprise in order to start a new enterprise he need some fund and that was to have a far reaching impact on hawking and others all over the world okay so in 1980 he needs a fund he needs a practical need for fund to launch a or to start an enterprise to start an enterprise he needs some fund he thought of writing a book okay what is thinking about yes he thought of to he thought of writing a book he thought of writing a book about the universe he thought of writing about a book about the universe and about the most interesting question that had made him want to study cosmology and quantum theory so he thought of writing a book about the universe about the most interesting questions that had made him to want to study cosmology and quantum study yes he want to speak about quantum theory and about the cosmology through his book to the world and what is the universe come from is the universe infinite or does it have any boundaries will it come to an end if so how okay is there a complete theory of universe and everything in it is there a beginning of time could time run back the book begins by rewinding the great theories of the cosmos from newton to einstein and he wrote the book to make science science understandable to known scientists listen okay so this quest his book what is a book a brief history of time okay he would like to publish a brief history of time and there was a practical need for fund to publish this book and in this book he thought of writing a book about the universe he thought of writing a book about the universe about the most interesting questions that made you want to study cosmology and quantum theory he liked to speak to them about cosmology and quantum theories yes which are the questions with a doubt that he get cleared in this text or in the book where did the universe come from is the universe infinite or does it have any boundaries will it come to an end if so how is there a complete theory of universe and everything in it is there a beginning of time could time run back the book begins by rewinding the great theories of cosmos from newton to einstein he wrote the book to make science understandable to known scientists so 
these all doubts get cleared in this book which are the questions is the universe infinite or does it have any boundaries is the universe come to an end if so how is there a complete theory of universe and everything in it is there a beginning of time could a time run back okay these all are the questions that are asked in his book and the book begins by rewinding which book a brief history of time by stephen hawking this book begins by rewinding the great theories of cosmos from newton to einstein so this book it begins by rewinding the great theories of cosmos from newton to einstein and he wrote the book to make science understandable to known scientists he wrote the book to make science understandable to known scientists he completed the first draft in 1984 he completed the first draft of the book in 1984 while the revision process was going on he made a trip to switzerland so he completed the first draft of a book in 1984 while the revision process was going on he made a trip to switzerland he completed the first draft of the book in 1984 while the revision process was going on he made a trip to switzerland he made a trip to switzerland there he was down with pneumonia while he went to switzerland he was down with pneumonia there and he was left on a life support system okay while he went to switzerland while he made a trip to switzerland he was down with pneumonia there and uh, there was left with a life support system the doctors gave a choice as to whether a tracheotomy operation which would remove his windpipe should be conducted or not the doctors may consent with jane wild okay whether a tracheotomy operation will conduct or not okay and the doctors gave a choice as to whether a tracheotomy operation which would would remove which would remove his windpipe and it should be conducted or not the doctors were also in dilemma because they want to do the operation immediately but the, if the if they do this operation if they do this operation what will happen it will remove his windpipe if the windpipe was removed he was not unable to speak a single word okay so they may consent with jane wild his wife doctors give a choice as to whether a tracheotomy operation which would remove his windpipe should be conducted or not and it might save his life if you remove the windpipe if we remove the windpipe it would remove if we remove the windpipe it might save his life if we remove the windpipe it might save his life but afterwards he could never again to able to speak or to make a vocal sound if his windpipe is removed it might save his life if his windpipe is removed it might save his life but afterwards he would never be able to speak or to make a vocal sound okay if the windpipe is removed he would never be able to speak or he would make any vocal sound with a grave misgivings jane consented with a grave misgivings jane consented okay jane consented to give operation to done sorry i yes jane with the grave misgivings jane consented to do this operation which operation is there yes take your tommy operation if this operation to get tommy operation that would remove his windpipe if the windpipe is removed stephen hawking would not be able to speak or to make a single sound and with the grave misgivings jane consented to do this operation to get tommy operation and the future look look the future looked very bleak jane remarked Hawking could no longer breathe through his mouth and the nose. And what about his future then? His future looked very bleak, Jane remarked. Hawking could no longer breathe through his mouth or nose. He could no longer breathe through his mouth and the nose after this operation, but only through a permanent opening made in his throat. He could breathe only a permanent opening that is made in his throat. okay after the operation the future looked very bleak and hawking could no longer breathe through his mouth and nose but only through a permanent opening made in his throat after many weeks of intensive care he went home to join jane 
after many weeks of intensive care he went home to join jane and his three children after three weeks of intensive care he went home with jane and his three children he was still too weak to continue his research so after this operation was done his condition became worse and after many weeks of intensive care he went home with the jane and with his three children he was still too weak and ill to continue his research walter walters walter walters a computer expert in california walter walters a computer expert in california okay the future very uh, okay let's continue okay the future looked very bleak jane remarked and hawking could no longer breathe through his mouth or his nose but only through a permanent opening made in his throat after many weeks of intensive care uh he went to jane and with the three children he was still he was still too weak to continue his research Walter Walters a computer expert in California sent him a program called Equalizer which allowed Stephen Hawking to select words from the screen so the future of Stephen Hawking it looked a very bleak jane remarked and he could no longer breathe through the nose mouth and the nose but through a permanent opening made in the ha made in his throat and after many weeks of intensive care he went home to jane and with his three children and still he was very weak and he was ill to continue his research then walter walters a computer expert was walter walters a computer expert in california walter walters a computer expert in california he sent him a program he had a developer called equalizer so walter walters a computer expert in california he sent him a program called equalizer which allowed stephen to select words from the screen so walter walters a computer expert from california he selected some uh, he sent him a program called equalizer okay walter walters a computer expert from california he had sent him a program called equalizer and with this program equalizer which allowed stephen hawking to select a word from the screen which helped stephen hawking to select a word from the screen okay and with this uh, with this uh, equalizer program he made chat with others or he interacted or he communicated with others only with this equalizer program it was made by walter walters a computer expert from california he thought he would be unable to finish this book with the support of a student brian wood a brief history of time was published in 1988 So Stephen Hawking said he would be unable to finish this book and with the support of a student Brian Witt with the support of a student Brian Witt Jane sorry with the support of the Brian Witt a brief history of time was published in 1988 Stephen Hawking's great ambition okay a brief history of time it was published in which year it was published in 1988 and in September 2005 so the release of an abridged version of the original book in 2005 an abridged version of the book was also published and this version was updated to address the new issues that arise in due to the further scientific developments and the abridged version was updated this abridged version was updated to address the new issues that had arise in due to the further scientific developments okay next paragraph one may encounter a multitude of paradox in the books the signs with the people things are often not what they seem and pieces that ought to fit together refuse to do so you will learn that beginnings may be endings cruel circumstances can lead to happiness although fame and success may not 
Two great scientific theories taken together seem to give us nonsense. Empty space isn't empty. Black holes are in black, and a man whose appearance inspires shock and pity takes us laughing toward the boundaries of the time and the space ought to be, but are not. One will encounter a multitude of paradoxes in the book. In which book? Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. In science and with the people, things are often what they seem, and pieces what that ought to fit together refuse to do so. And you will learn that beginnings may be endings. We will learn from the book that beginnings may be endings. Cruel circumstances can lead to happiness. Cruel circumstances can lead to happiness. Although fame and success may note, and two great scientific theories taken together seem to give us nonsense. Empty space isn't empty. Empty space isn't empty. Black hole and black holes are in black. Empty space, empty spaces aren't empty, and black holes are in black. And a man whose appearance inspires shock and pity takes us laughing toward the boundaries of the time and the space ought to be, but are not. Okay, we can see in this book, A Brief History of Time, these all theories are interpreted. These theories are interpreted in this book, A Brief History of Time. And it is of course a miracle that Stephen Hawking was able to achieve everything he has and that he is still alive. However, when you experience this intelligence and humor, you begin to take this unusual mode of communication and is obviously catastrophic physical problems no more seriously than he seems to himself. It is of course a miracle that Hawking has been able to achieve everything in his hands. When we are talking about Stephen Hawking, we will understand that his life is a full of miracle. His life is full of miracle. Something miracles has happened to his life because the, time, because the doctors had advised him only two more years to live. Okay, but he was died in which year? He died in 2018. March 14, 2018. He passed away, isn't it? So it is of course a miracle that Hawkins he will be able to achieve everything he has and everything still has and he's still alive. However, when you still experience this intelligence and humor, you will be take us unusual mode of communication. When we are talking about this intelligence and humor, you will understand that his unusual mode of communication. That means he's not communicated exactly like we, like us. Okay, like us, we, he is not uh, interacted with others easily. That, is, uh, that means that there is some uh, unusual mode of communication that's taking place within him because of these uh, equalizer program, the equalizer program, and also the permanent uh, hall made into snot. He was not communicated exactly like us. And you begin to take this unusual mode of communication and just obviously catastrophic physical problems are more seriously than he seems to himself. Uh, his life was full of tragedy, but because of his optimistic and determination and his willpower, he achieved each and every goal in his life, isn't it? So that is exactly that he says wanted. He chose to ignore the difficulty. He always uh, ignored the difficulties. He never, uh, he never accepted any difficulties in his life. He ignores everything. He ignores every difficulties in his life. And he expects others to adopt the same attitude. He uh, expects that others will adopt the same attitude that is ignoring difficulties in their life. And Stephen Hawking has overcome his crippling disease. Stephen Hawking has overcome his crippling disease and to become the supernova of the world of physics. Again, he became the supernova of, physic, uh, of the world of physics. Stephen Hawking has become the crippling disease. He has overcome his crippling disease. Stephen Hawking has overcome his crippling disease and he became the supernova of world physics. Okay, this is adapted really. This chapter is adapted by Kitty Coil Ferguson, and the chapter is about Stephen Hawking's biography. I think that you will enjoy this lesson because we are learning about Stephen Hawking's in very simple English manner. Okay, thank you, thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe my channel and share my videos to your friends too. Thank you, thanks all.